we've seen that the quantity work is the effect of a force along a displacement. So that's sort of the accumulation of the effect of a force as it acts through space. Now we'll look at a related quantity called impulse. Impulse, rather than being an action of a force through space, is the action of a force through time. So to start off with a conceptual understanding of impulse, we'll look at what happens with a force applied over a time. What we'd like to demonstrate right now is that the change in velocity of an object is equal to the net force acting on it times the time over which this force acts divided by the mass of the object. So what's sort of missing from this equation, but implicitly there, is acceleration, the quantity that relates a change in velocity and a change in time. So we'll put down the two equations that we have involving acceleration. The one on the left is Newton's second law, acceleration is force divided by mass. The one on the right is the kinematic definition of acceleration, the rate of change of velocity. We set those two equal to each other and the acceleration disappears. The rate of change of velocity equals the net force divided by the mass. A very simple rearrangement, simply multiplying both sides by the change in time, gives us the desired result, that the change in velocity is the force over a time divided by the mass. So the greater the force, the greater the change in velocity. The greater the time over which the force acts, the greater the change in velocity. And the less the mass of the object, the greater the change in velocity. So this quantity impulse is defined simply as force through a time. So that's the force times the time over which it acts. This quantity, as you can see by the notation, impulse with the vector arrow over it, means that it's a vector. It's the result of multiplying a vector, the force, by a scalar, the time. So the units of impulse are not going to be force units, they're going to be force times time units. So they'd be Newton seconds. Before we derived that the change in velocity of an object is the force times time divided by mass, now I've just replaced the force times time by impulse. So an object's change in velocity is just the impulse added to it divided by its mass. Since we've spent some time familiarizing ourselves with the idea of work, and trying to conceptually understand what it is, I'd like to here make a comparison between impulse and work, so some of the ways that impulse and work are related and ways that they're different. First of all, impulse is defined as a force acting over a time. Work is a force acting along a displacement. Impulse changes the velocity of an object. It's a vector. Velocity is a vector. Work is not a vector. It's a scalar. It changes the speed. Impulse, as I said, is a vector. On the other hand, work is a scalar. If work is done on an object, that means that the impulse has to be non-zero, because doing work will change the object's speed. If you change the speed, the velocity has to change. However, it is possible to have a non-zero impulse without having any work done. It is possible to change something's velocity without changing its speed. What that means is you're changing the direction, so it's turning, but neither speeding up nor slowing down. That's the result of a non-zero impulse, but it would be zero work.